After a good showing in the G4 and then the V10 after it, of course, one of the main features of the LG G5 that we want to take a look at is the camera. So, it's Joshua Vergara from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And this is a closer look at the LG G5's camera. So we're spending time with the LG G5 here in Barcelona, Spain, and we have this wonderful backdrop that we've already been taking a lot of pictures with using the G5. And we have a new setup on the back with these two lenses on the back that provide not only the regular lens construction, but also a wide angle lens of 135 degrees worth of field of view. Of course, having this new camera setup means that the design of the G5 is pretty radically different from ones that we've seen in the past, especially with the G4 and the V10. But with these two cameras, what we have is a wide angle version that is of 8 megapixels and then a 16 megapixel regular camera is going to accompany it. And being able to go from wide angle to a regular and more narrow view is going to happen automatically as you zoom in and out of the photo, which we'll show you in a little bit. As far as the front facing camera goes, it is a 8 megapixel shooter. Of course, one of the best parts about the cameras in previous LG iterations is that it had a great manual mode, and we're going to take a look at that in a little bit. One of the main shortcuts to get into it is pressing the volume down button a couple of times and you get right into the camera interface. Now, a lot of this will look pretty familiar. I'll head over to the simple mode first, and you'll see that it is a basic point and shoot sort of interface. So what we have here is the wide angle view, as you can see denoted by the icons on the top. And if we just press on any area, it will focus there using the included laser autofocus and just take the picture as I'm pressing the screen. But of course you can pinch to zoom in order to zoom in and you'll see the icon change up here. As I zoom in, it changes to the regular lens, the 60 megapixel lens that is not of that very wide field of view. But of course it's going to have the same property of just taking the picture after focusing as I tap the screen. Now moving on to the auto mode, this is where you'll get a lot of different modes available in the mode area right here. Everything from auto to a nice pop out that'll put some style on the photo. We can add a lens blur to the outer rim. We can also do the black and white for the outside, which looks pretty nice as well. I'm going to take that photo right there. And that is one of the modes that is available. Multi-view, as you can see the picture right now, is basically, you can see me and the camera right now, you can take a picture one by one by one to create a very nice effect on there. Other modes include a snap and panorama mode, a slow-mo, which is basically for video, of course, and then a time-lapse feature that allows you to take a really nice photo every however many seconds, uh, as you can see in the setting right there, in order to record a nice-looking time-lapse video using photos. But that gets all of the modes out of the way, so let's take a look at some of the settings. Uh, we do have the ability to change the aspect ratio, of course, uh, and also to show what kind of HD photo and video you're going to be taking, including 4K video. Now you also have HDR that can be turned on and off or set to the auto so you don't have to do all that guesswork. From here, you can have some film looks as well to stylize the shot, including black and white, and then a few extra modes and settings like image stabilization that you can use on top of the OIS that is already constructed into the cameras. Speaking of OIS, we took some video uh, while walking through the streets of Barcelona and you can see it right now, and the OIS seems to be doing a pretty good job of making even my steady hands look even better. But now we can jump into the manual mode and this is where all of the granular control can be found. You have everything from the different sliders that are available, even the white balance is done in the Kelvin readings and you can see that I'm actually making the photo that much warmer or I can make it that much cooler. And then of course we'll hit auto to go back to the regular setting. You can also see what you're shooting with here at the top. We have the white balance reading at 4900 Kelvin. We even have the shutter speed at 1 over 180 and the aperture is at f1.8. If I was to zoom out to create the wide angle, you can see just how much more of the photo you can create. So by zooming in and out like that, they move seamlessly between the two with that just kind of half second pause in between to switch between the two modules. Even more sliders down here, including the shutter speed, if you want to get some nice slow, maybe perhaps during night shots, you want to have a much slower shutter speed, or even faster if you want to capture motion. We'll go ahead and just head that back over to 1 over 125. 
and then ISO readings if you need to get a little bit more punch in your photos, especially during low light situations. So that is the manual mode, and we actually took a lot of photos with the LG G5 while out here in Barcelona, and you can see for yourself and judge for yourself what the quality is like. Now we do have to mention that the cameras on all LG G5s that you might be seeing here at MWC are not final software. So you have to sort of take that into account, and that is why we're not necessarily comparing the pictures from the G5 to any other phones at the moment. Uh, you can actually take this as a preview of what you can expect, and if it's anything like the G4 or the V10 that came after it, we think that the pictures are going to come out pretty great. But you can always judge for yourself by looking at these photos. So that should pretty much do it for this quick look, this feature focus on the cameras of the LG G5. Hopefully you're enjoying all of the photos that you're seeing right now and you can judge for yourself what you think the quality might be like, but they might be even better once the actual phone comes out because this is not final software. That said, however, we have a lot of fun already with this camera, especially considering the wide angle lens that is included and that dual camera setup looks like it should be really fun to use. Uh, the front facing camera does seem to have a fairly narrow field of view, so you might have to take that into account when you're taking your selfies, but at least when you want to get even better field of view for things like scenery or any landscapes, you can definitely use that for the rear-facing camera. Overall, however, we're excited to really put this camera through its paces and to compare it to plenty of other phones, including the original LG G4, the V10, and even the Samsung phones that are coming out a little bit later this year. So keep it tuned to Android Authority for even more about the LG G5 as we're spending some quality time with the phone right now here in Barcelona, Spain. Of course, we're here for MWC 2016, so make sure you stay tuned here for that and the rest of our coverage because we are your source for all things Android.